as you know, coaching is such a strategic competence um, to our leadership and the ability to integrate coaching into leadership is is really essential to having a lasting impact on the people that you work with. So before we begin, I just want to go over a few little housekeeping uh, items. Um, my colleague Kapila is on with us and he will, at the end of this call, this webinar, um, put up a very brief survey poll. And if you wouldn't mind taking that, it's not very long at all, but we would appreciate your feedback and suggestions and recommendations. So that's very brief and that's at the end. And then we'd like to, as much as we can, through this webinar, engage you all in conversation. And we're gonna do that through the chat function. As you can see, I have, um, it's down on the right-hand side of your screen. And when you do use the chat, please make sure it says to all participants, so that this way we can engage in conversation, uh, not just with me, but with with your peers that are on the on the on the uh, webinar today. All right, so let's um, let's begin. I um, have some quotes up here. I just like to use a lot of inspiring quotes, and one of the ones that speaks to me, particularly as it relates to coaching, is um, Maya Angelou's quote, um, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, that people will never forget how you made them feel. And the reason I like that and how it relates to coaching is because coaching is moving people to action through their emotions. So it is what really drives and motivates people is tapping those feelings. Um, it's sort of the emotional intelligence, um, if you will. So that is very, very important. So that's why I wanted to uh, start with that quote. Okay, so let me just move on. So here's our agenda for today. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the definition of coaching. We will. I'll share some um, coaching models with you and also three uh, components of how, um, of what makes a good coach and they are presence, perspective and powerful conversations. So we'll talk a little bit about that and then I wanna hear your voices. I wanna hear your stories, your experience of coaching. Um, if you've ever had a coach yourself what was that like? And I want to relate it to what you're doing with your VISTAs. Um, what are the specific successes of coaching your VISTAs? And what may be some of the challenges? And then I'd like you to think about one action step that you will take away from this, this webinar today that you'll take with you to improve your coaching competence. And then I'll share a few resources with you. Um, also, I am, I will put in my email address at the end. So if you would like this PowerPoint, I am happy to share it if that is um, of help and interest to you. That is optional, but I did want to uh, let you know that I'm happy to share it. Okay. Okay. So professional coaching. Um, ICF stands for International Coach Federation. And this is the sort of premier organization, if you will, that um, certifies coaches. Um, if you are interested in learning more about coaching, you can go to their website and you can sign up for their newsletters and um, articles. And I would encourage you to do that because there are a lot of people out there since coaching is sort of very trendy, who are saying, yes, I'm a coach. But it does take some uh, some study and some thought. And so if you want to um, get some really good um, core competencies, read what International Coach Federation has to offer. So they define coaching as partnering. So I'm putting our VISTAs in here. So you're partnering with your VISTAs in a thought-provoking creative process. This is to help people develop personally and professionally. Okay, it's very holistic coaching, right? So it is a partnership. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about 
leadership and coaching and how you sort of navigate those two aspects. Just go to the next slide here. So what is a coach's responsibility? Um, you need to really listen to people and to help them discover and clarify and align what they want to achieve. And often that takes inquiry and being curious. Um, so we want to encourage our vistas to on a path to self-discovery. And ultimately, coaching is about, <clears throat> excuse me, not um, giving people the solutions, but helping them find the solutions within themselves because then it's sustainable, then it's part of who they are, and that will stay with them always. So that is what we want. We want to sort of help them be self-generating and self-correcting, okay? And we also want our VISTA or our client, whatever we are, um, whoever we are working with, to be responsible and to be accountable. So a coach supports and challenges people to meet their goals, okay? All right, so a little bit about the coaching process. Often when I, I've been a coach for, oh my goodness, over 20 years and a trainer and facilitator with AmeriCorps and Vista for over 20 years. So I, um, I, I start by having a one-on-one, -on -one, of course, uh, if I can see the person, um, you know, in face-to-face, -face, it's perfect. If you can't, you can somewhat do things uh, via phone, and often they are done via phone afterwards. But you may do an assessment if you um, have Myers-Briggs or if you have a communication assessment. So sort of have the client uh, or VISTA sort of get a sense of where they want to go, where their strengths are, what are their priorities, to just sort of have a, a plan to think about what are the outcomes you want to achieve. Now, in the coaching process, which is usually, if you're working, um, it's usually three-month coaching process, and that you would, the goals and outcomes can change as you work with your VISTA or your client. So that's sort of a fluid, but at least in the beginning, you want to set up a goal to, to work toward. And um, I do use Myers-Briggs, and I also use an emotional intelligence competency inventory to help people sort of identify where, where their priorities are. Okay. All right, so um, this next slide, um, is important because you all are leaders in your organization. So you're leading, you're managing, um, and then you, we want you to integrate coaching. So management, if you make the distinction in your mind, management, leadership is about performance. What do you have to get done? The compliance issues, your performance management systems, decision-making, how do you make your vision, strategic thinking, practical, they're all the sort of, um, you know, almost linear and analytical ways that you lead and you manage. Now, the coaching part, that is about developing the, your person, okay, or your people. Um, it's about being aspirational, thinking of the future, thinking of the long term, um, helping our members have meaningful service experiences. It's also the coaching part. If you can integrate that, um, it will help with retention because pe our VISTAs that feel listened to, heard, and supported to meet their goals personally and professionally will stay with the program. It's human nature that when people are supported, toward what they want to develop and grow, they'll stay. So that's a really important piece because retention is always comes up as a challenge for our VISTAs and our VISTA leaders. Powerful conversations, um, self-awareness. So looking at this, when you think about your VISTAs, 
So when do you manage and when do you coach and how do you navigate that that uh, line because there is a distinction so one way I, um, I would like you to think about it is if you are for example you have a report that is due so you need all hands on deck you need everyone engaged in it you need this report to be done maybe it's gone to CNCS you need all this um, everybody's thoughts and data um, you know that is um, okay needed 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 for um, the corporation so okay so that's a sort of management you have your leader hat on you have your management hat on okay um, because that is a has a deadline you have to get it done okay so then maybe in that process when you take the time to reflect well how did that report go what happened what went well what didn't go so well so when you're in your um, in your sort of phase of reflecting on how that was and maybe you noticed one of your vistas did not um, did not participate or did not have information that was uh, needed for this report in a timely manner well, maybe I wasn't might... able to find it Amanda I checked a couple times even when I looked you okay. know under please, um, please mute your phone mute your phone thank you thank you um, so in that case, so the report is done, but then you would go approach your VISTA that you had a concern with and ask, you know, can we sit down and talk about this and let's talk about what happened, how they showed up, what, you know, and that's where you sort of put your coach hat on. So it's a distinction and um, it's a it's a fine line, but it is clearly a distinction and you can say. I'm trying to listen to a webinar. I'll look it up. Um, could um excuse me, could you put yourself on mute? Put yourself on mute, please. Thank you. All right. So um so that's a sort of some of the ways you make that distinction. And be clear when you're doing the coaching, it's like I'd like to offer you some coaching around this issue of how, you know, and, and you actually put it out there. And um so that's how you make that distinction with with your visitor, with your client. Okay. All right. So just a little bit more on sort of distinction here between, um, you know, there's a sort of strategic thinking and self-awareness. And we need both of these. Both of these are critical to effective and powerful and impactful leadership. Okay. okay. So um, these are the three critical components of coaching. I like to call it the power of three, presence, perspective, and powerful conversations. So I'm going to go through these quickly because I really want to hear your voices. Um, presence is something that is a true gift to people, especially in our time of multitasking, constant distraction. It is really important. Um, a coach has to listen with a laser-like focus laser-like focus nothing can get to it can interfere with that um, it makes a person feel validated and heard and um, honored and so they are more likely to open up and talk about some of the things that they would like to work on okay so laser-like focus as if there's no one else in the universe that is presence and that is um, an active listener. Very, very important, okay? Perspective um, is a way that you can almost mirror, as you're listening to what your VISTA is telling you, you want to mirror for them um, how that comes across, what might be, so that they can see the situation from a different point of view and, uh, you know, and point to their strengths. Always be um, focused on the positive in a person okay so that's the mirroring piece the powerful conversations again that's the power of inquiry you have to ask questions you have to be curious remember the goal of coaching is to help people determine their own solutions and become self-generating and self-correcting so that involves you as a coach asking the right questions 
what might be um, a profound and powerful questions that you could ask to unlock your VISTA's wisdom and potential? What might empower them? Um, what may help um, put the burden of discovery on them? Because a lot of times, you know, I've been coaching for so many years and people say, well, what do you think I should do? Well, my role is not to tell people what to do, but to, through coaching and through listening and through mirroring and giving them a different perspective, have them have the solutions and the answers come from within, okay? Then you know it's theirs. They own it. They've got it, all right? So, um, and when you think of a leader, um, I know many of you have heard of Brene Brown, Daring Greatly. I love her definition of a leader, which is a leader is anyone who holds herself or himself responsible or accountable for finding potential in people and in processes. So um, I think that definition of a leader um, really does integrate coaching into that because it's all about helping people find potential. Okay, so now to do our chat, and that's how we're going to have a conversation. It's your turn to talk. I would love for you to express through the chat function um, what your experience is as a coaching your VISTAs, um, what might be the successes and the challenges, and what would you need to do to grow your coaching skills? So let's start with the first question of what's your experience been with working and coaching VISTAs? Janice? Yes. Yes, while they are responding, could you kindly have you made the host role again, the WebEx? Oh, okay, sure. pick, pick, pick me out. Oh, <laughs> so. okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> I will give it back to you. Oh, wait. Oh, okay, wait. thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay, I think you've got it, Kapila. All right. So in the chat function, please, um, Oh, there we go. I have this need. Coaching about attendance. Toriana, yes, about attendance. So um, do others have some response for Toriana? Anyone else have a, a VISTA who needs coaching about attendance? That's quite common. Oh, uh, Toriana, um, you have uh, your chat is to your host and presenter. Could you just click on it so that it says to everyone so that your your colleagues can see what you've been writing? And uh, Rosalind says, I've been coaching my business on time management and managing up. Lovely. And how have you been doing that? Because that will help Toriana with the attendance. How do you do that? coaching your VISTAs on time management, managing up. Are you using questions, conversations? Yes, I mean, these are really very quite common. Maximizing strengths, maximizing strengths, all right, let's see what else is here. Trying to read here, I sent my list of weekly emails, various resources in regards to time management. Oh, a passion planner, excellent resource. Thank you for that. So um, that's great wisdom and guidance for your colleagues, you know, a time management planner. And it's also not just managing time, but managing your energy, you know, um, email communications, helpful to have a phone call or FaceTime call to clear up miscommunication. Absolutely. With your VISTAs, especially if they're all over, um, you know, the state, in other states, as VISTA leaders, you need to 
to see their faces as much as you can. Use Skype, use FaceTime. Um, it's really important. And um, yes, that's a good question Aiden asks. Um, what is a passion planner? I'm trying to give Kapila. We're trying again, Kapila, to give you that host role. For some reason, it's okay. Yeah, something is happening with WebEx with the. Yeah, it actually has the little um, the little ball that is right next to your name, as if you are the host. But, I know uh, it's it, but okay. I don't know what's okay. going on. It still. Okay, I'm try. I'll try one more time here. Let's see if we can. Yeah, it, let's. Yeah, it. that's fine. Continue with your. Conversation, Janice. We should Got not it. let this be. A... Got it. Okay. All right. No okay. Problem. Thank you. Right. No, you're welcome. Okay. Um, take on responsibility. Okay. This is good. Asking questions of and incorporating. It's almost like a partnership. Um, you know, what would what could change the aspect of this project? How could the person, your vista, take on more responsibility? And again, you're supporting there and you're challenging you know, supporting and challenging, because a coach has to do both. A leader has to do both. These are awesome. Thank you. Let's see what else. And people being overwhelmed. Okay. Mostly use email. Okay. And FaceTime. Okay. A Vista who is overwhelmed. And then we're getting information on the planner. This is awesome. Thank you. This, this is great. I really, the planner sounds very interesting too. All right. So in thinking about, so what have been, let's just move on. I mean, these are great um, conversations. Let's think about successes and challenges. What have been the successes with your, with your VISTAs, coaching them? What have been the successes? Uh, the question, is it acceptable as a coach to accept that some businesses cannot be motivated? Well, I would, I, I mean, I have to believe that anyone can be motivated. I, as a coach, have to have, for me, I have to have a positive um, belief that anyone, uh, if you ask the right questions, if you, you know, be the role model that anyone can um, be motivated. Um, and you might have to, with that person, you know, sort of dig a little bit deeper to see what's making that person feel so, um, you know, sort of not motivated. Like, what's going on? And you might just say, you know, I'm really struggling. I really want to support you. Could you tell me, you know, let me know how I can support you. Um, things don't seem to be getting done. Like really reach out to the to your person in a very authentic, um, supportive, caring way. You know, ultimately, you. I know you have to get things done. You're, you're the leader here, but when you're in the coaching role, you can actually say, "I'm really struggling. I want to help you. I want to support you. I want to see you be the best you can be." So that's maybe a an approach that you might try. Okay. Oh, Passion Planner is getting good reviews here. Okay. I'm going to look that up too. All right. So, um, all right. So successes and challenges. What have been some of the, the peak experiences that you've had with your VISTA? And what have been some of the struggles? I know the one about not being motivated. Anybody else want to join in about successes and challenges? Oh, okay. And um, what, I can't see the name of this person, but you're saying you actually, you know, are building, You. this is great because you're building momentum by celebrating and documenting each week the good things that happened. So you're really leading and coaching from an appreciative approach. Excellent. That's great. 
And that builds momentum. It builds um, trust that they can trust that, you know, you are honoring their work. You see their work. Excellent. I love these chats. They're very good. Anybody else? And somebody talked about establishing clear boundaries. Absolutely. You know, a coach, you're not, um, you know, though you're, you still have to challenge people as a coach. You can be, you know, this caring and listening person, but there's still a boundary. There's still um, a, a level of respect and and honor in that discourse between um, a coach and a coachee. Interested in coaching business on Mr. Supervisor Dynamic, a great, great topic, yes. Um, sort of managing up. So what, you know, I'm actually, um, I'm doing some action learning with uh, my um, a group of VISTA leaders, and we are actually going to be focusing on that, our site supervisors, and how to work with them, how to manage, how to make sure they get the information. Okay, this is great. Thank you. Okay, so as um, coaches to your VISTAs, what do you need? What do you want to learn more about? How do you want to strengthen um, your coaching skills? Anybody? Anybody want to? Is there anything you would like? Um, to learn to, um, how are you going to strengthen this coaching skill? I'm seeing a lot of challenges, okay. How do I draw the answers from the business as opposed to just giving advice? And it's, it's, you know, it's easier to give advice. We all want to. One of the hard things about coaching is that you have to hold back on that. It's really easy to want to solve things for people, but um, you want it to come from within. So the way you do that is to ask more questions. So instead of trying to solve things, keep asking questions. And in this webinar, if you want this PowerPoint, I will send it to you. There's just a ton of really um, great questions that can help you in this process to dig a little deeper. Okay, so why don't we go to this and you'll, you'll, um, you will see here it is the power of inquiry. You've already um, hit on this topic already. It's, this is what a coach does. We ask questions. Um, you know, what story is holding you back? I'll just read a couple. You, and I, as I said, I'm happy to send this. How much energy are you willing to put into that? How would, would your ideal self create a solution? Again, this is, these questions are probing. They're provocative. You know, they're thought provoking. They're, you know, it's like really making people think. And then when you ask the question, it's okay to have a period of silence. You know how we always, it, sometimes we feel uncomfortable with silence, but as a coach, you have to listen very carefully. And when you ask a question like, you know, um, how would your ideal self create a solution? That requires a space, a quiet after that. So the, the person, your VISTA, is going to say, it, give her or him some time to think about that. You know, to, to think about that. Okay, so um, my business has a desire to do things, but struggle to find the motivation to take on new project that they create themselves. Okay, all right. So again, um, yeah, motivation. That's, you know, that's involving um, a really separate conversation, a really coaching conversation um, to with the questions and actually saying what would it take, you know, you know, what would it take to get you to do this? What is, you know, get the answer to be from your VISTA. Okay. 
that's what we're trying to do here. And again, more questions that I can send your way, uh, just a few that I really um, think are very, very helpful. What small steps can you take to get closer to your vision? So maybe if you have a problem with motivation, it's like what small step can you take to start building some momentum? Usually once you get a person moving, even a small step, then they'll take the next step, then the next, and then you have some momentum. And then you might find some motivation there once they feel some energy around it. Okay, and sometimes this does need training in order to execute their ideas and projects. Absolutely. And, and then the training is, you know, the training piece might come under the leadership slash management. The coaching is when you ask the questions, you listen, and you, like, develop your person. So again, there's a little distinction there. Okay, so um, another question that all coaches ask every single time, when will you start? By when will you have something done? Again, a coach has to hold um, your VISTA accountable. You know, um, by this date, you will have this done. If, you know, what can I do to support you to get to that? Okay, so there's this, this balancing of I'm challenging you, but I'm also supporting you. Okay, so this is the ICF again, the core competencies. And please continue to write things and questions through the chat as we, as we go through this, okay? Um, setting the foundation, that's building that, you know, the foundation is when you sit down the very first time uh, with someone, say you have a VISTA that has has a motivation problem. You might say, you know, I've noticed um, maybe a lack of energy here. Could we set up a time maybe every other week via phone to talk about this? I'd like to offer you coaching around this particular issue. So that's setting the foundation. And then when you set the foundation, it is also about setting a goal. What's our goal going to be? By when are we going to reach it? Um, how often will we talk? That's sort of setting up the structure or foundation. The relationship, it is, um, it's a partnership because um, that is how people make change. It's, you know, it's not being, I'm the leader looking down. I am your partner in this. I want to see you succeed. And of course, communicating effectively, which would be, you know, your powerful conversations, your questions. And then facilitating learning and results. When people do, just as one of the VISTA leaders on our call said that uh, she or he sends out, you know, here's what we've done well this week. So you want to um, support the results. When something does go well in the learning, you want to reflect on it and celebrate it and then ask questions about it. And this is all, you're all supporting each other. This is fabulous. I love this conversation. Wonderful. Okay, so then um, in this PowerPoint, I have some models. And these models, especially the EI model, which I like very much, the emotional intelligence model, is very helpful. So in other words, when you are going to, you have a VISTA coming in for a coaching session. And you might say, um, how are you feeling today? The I piece is what do you want to talk about? What do you want to achieve today? So it actually comes from them. What's going on right now? What possibilities? Uh, what are you going to do? Here's the action piece. How, is it, how are you going to make a difference? How will you know success? Very, very important question to ask someone up front. How will you know success? And then how are you feeling right now? Okay, so that's the emotional intelligence model. Just checking our chat here to see. Okay, this is awesome. Okay, so, and this just goes into a little more depth about this emotional intelligence coach, coaching model. So I'm not going to belabor it too much. It's, um, but, you know, some of the questions you might ask around the acronym of E would be how are you feeling? Where do you feel it? What does it tell you? Again, sort of a, a probing, if you will, to help people tap into what's going on for them. Okay. 
And while this is happening, while you're in this coaching session, again, the laser-like focus, the presence, there's no sort of, you know, half looking at your phone or, you know, it's all about the person you are coaching, your business, it's all about her or his agenda. That's what you're, you want to have them feel that. Uh, so Aiden said she likes the EI coaching model. Yeah, it's very simple to use and very powerful. I would, um, I use it all the time with great success. I really like this model. So again, here's more of the, the model, which some, uh, you know, a few questions rather than just the first slide was just one question for each of the, the letters. But, you know, um, great. Where, where do you want to be at the end of this? I mean, so you, again, you're like planning with the end in mind. So we have a coaching session here. Where do you want to be when we end? Okay. Internal resources, what would help you? And again, what are what's going on? So what's what's going on in your world right now? This is the current uh, opportunities, more thought provoking. What options are open to you? How would that fit in with who you are? What feels right? So see, these are really provocative questions. In action, what are you going to do? By when are you going to do it? How will you make it happen? All right, and how will you know success? Very very important question. And how do you feel right now? What worked for you today? Okay. All right. And here's another coaching model. I won't um, linger too long on this, but the GROW model, you know, your goal, what you want, reality, what's happening now, options, what could you do now, the next time, will, what will you do, and by when. Um, you know, because coaching can happen, you know, it can be an hour session, it can be 15 minutes, you know, it's, but it's, it's that laser-like focus and asking the right questions. Okay, so what happens, um, and please chime in here, if you've ever had a coach or a mentor that's impacted you, what, um, what happened for you? I'd like to hear your experience. So just write in the chat, if you would, before we go to talk about this, I'm going to write my email in here. So, um, If you would like the slides, um, please just send me an email and I'll send them to you. So please fill in the chat of your own experience of being coached, if you've ever had that experience. But as you see up here, coaching is, you really do enhance energy and job satisfaction. When a person feels honored and heard and listened to and that the leader cares about their development personally and professionally, people stay around. You have good retention, which is always an issue. Increased personal productivity, better problem solving, gains in knowledge and skills, better communication, positive attitude. This is creating um, and self-management, self-learning skills. What coaching does, it's been my experience, is that if you integrate coaching into your leadership, it changes the culture. It becomes a coaching culture where people don't feel if they make a mistake, they're going to get be uh, penalized. It's a, it's a more trusting, more um, positive, engaging culture. And that's where, again, you do, it would help you with recruitment, and it certainly would help with retention. Okay. All right. So um, some resources for you. Um, I'm sorry, I have a typo there. I see that. Center for Creative Leadership, excuse me, uh, Leader is Coach, which is an outstanding resource. Um, if I had to pick um, three, if I love the power of three, and um, I would pick Daring Greatly, which is wonderful, and Leader is Coach, the Center for creative leadership, and I would look at um, the International Coach Federation. All of these are excellent resources, but if I had to, I know you're busy, I had to pick three that were the ones I would, would pick. Um, all right, so, and so in thinking about these resources, I have another question for you that I'd like to ask. Okay, so we're 
getting close to the end of what I have to share for this webinar, but I'd like to engage you in a conversation of um, what might be one action that you might take after listening to this webinar and after reading all the intense conversation and productive conversation on the chat. Is there something you are going to take away that you could actually use with your vistas? And I'll wait to hear some responses. You know, I want to add something here too while you're while you're um, thinking about that. The um, International Federation on Coaching they um, actually have created templates that might be helpful to you. So it is a template of just um, in in essence a form that talks about a coaching situation. Um, the coaching approach you're going to use, for example, if you're going to use um, Emotional intelligence. I see some always like drawing diagrams and process flow charts. Yeah, actually, actually, that's a a brilliant idea too because you know at that point you are honoring different styles of of people's learning. So drawing, um, you know, a flow chart, uh, creating a visual, you know, having the their goals be visual as well as articulated honors both sides of our brain. So very, very good suggestion. Thank you for that. And I think that helped all our other VISTA leaders on the call as well. But um, what I was saying is about there is a template you can use for coaching so that when you do sit down with someone, you can just say, you know, have a, a sort of a, um, you, you know, when you first start coaching, it's okay to have questions, a list of questions in front of you. That's all right. Uh, and then your template. What's the situation? Just to jot a few um, thoughts down. What's your approach? What are the results? And then what's the reflection? After you coach someone, you know, I, th I think coaching does take a lot of self-reflection um, and um, constantly looking inward at yourself as a coach. How did I do? Did I listen carefully? Did I pay attention to my coach's agenda? You know, was I, um, did I ask probing and provocative questions that elicited some good responses from that person, that person's energy and wisdom? Um, and then um, you can just have this sort of sheet that you can jot a few notes down so that each time you meet with your person, you have a sense of where you've gone before and what the goal is. So it's, you know, it's not so much like keeping notes as just sort of the, the structure of the call, because you don't want to be writing too much, especially if you have a face-to-face -face meeting. You want your eyes to be connected with the person that you are um, coaching, all right? But, um, and you want to capture best practices, too. All right. Is there any other any questions you have for me? Any uh, thing that I can um, offer? Any other resources you would like? I'd be happy to to answer any questions. Or if you have questions for each other, please continue in the chat. No, so no questions. Okay, so I don't want to hold you. I think that we had a very, um, very engaging conversation. You've shared a lot of thoughts and ideas with each other. I hope that this webinar has helped you think about coaching in, in a new way. And 
in a maybe deeper way than you've already been doing. I really like, um, I hope that you will look the, at these resources and also we all have to get that passion planner. <laughs> um, it sounds really good and I think it's important to um, tap into people's passion and purpose because that is tapping into what um, is very sustainable for them because if you tap their passion and purpose, it is, um, it's, I'll share the passion planner. Thank you so much. I would love it. I would love it. So I gave you my email address. Please just send me an email if you want the um, if you want this webinar, if it can help you in any way. I thank you so much for your kind attention. I think you're all awesome and amazing. You all are out there doing such amazing, wonderful, important work, more important than ever. I just um, am honored to have the opportunity to work with VISTA leaders and with VISTA. So thank you all for that. Uh, Kapila is going to put up a very brief poll. And if you wouldn't mind, please, giving us some feedback, uh, we would appreciate that greatly. Okay? And thank you all and stay well and um, keep doing your wonderful work. I will sign off and let you do your polling there. Okay? Thank you so much.